Michigan football is one of the best programs historically, but as of the last few years, they have not been able to get over the hump. Jim Harbaugh has been the head coach, and while he has experienced some highs, he's not been able to get over Ohio State. He's lost some games that he should not have lost, and overall, people are worried about the direction of the Michigan football program. After an abysmal 2020 season, many thought Harbaugh could potentially be fired, but instead, he was hit with a massive contract extension, which left a lot of people scratching their heads. Going into 2021, Michigan football will look to bounce back, and in today's video, we are going to preview the Wolverines, go through their roster, their schedule, and everything you need to know about this team. But right before we get into that, apparently nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so be sure to hit that subscribe button as I really appreciate it and you won't want to miss out on any more college football content. Now let's go ahead and get started and preview the 2021 Michigan Wolverines. As always, we are going to start with a roster preview. Let's first take a look at the recruiting and the transfer portal. Overall, Jim Harbaugh signed a number 13 overall class in the 2021, and it was the second best in the Big Ten. It was headlined by J.J. McCarthy and Donovan Edwards, plus 10 other four-star recruits. There are also a lot of glue guys, and they picked up some decent pieces in the transfer portal. They landed Dalen Baldwin, a wide receiver from Jacksonville State, a defensive lineman from Oregon State, an offensive lineman from Louisiana Tech, and then a huge impact player at a position of need in Alan Bowman from Texas Tech, who is a quarterback. So from there, let's go ahead and springboard right into that quarterback depth chart. Right now, there is a quarterback battle between three guys, and there are four on the roster. Alan Bowman has a couple years of starting experience from Texas Tech, and will look to start based on all that experience, but I'm not sure if he's going to be the guy. JJ McCarthy was a five-star recruit, and has been pegged as the future of the program for quite a while now, but I'm not sure if he will play just yet. The likely starter will be Cade McNamara, who set numerous records in the state of Las Vegas and actually showed out pretty well in the limited time he started last year. Our offensive coordinator loves McNamara, and personally, I believe he will be the starter. And then the fourth guy is Dan Valari, who I think will end up transferring eventually. When you look at the running back position, they lost Zach Charbonnet to UCLA and Chris Evans to Cincinnati, so they will need a couple guys to step up, but they have some experience. Hassan Haskins will be back for what seems like the 100th season now, and him and former four-star recruit Blake Corum should be the two starters. After that, true freshman Donovan Edwards should see some time, and then Tavier Dunlap should be the fourth-string guy. After losing Nico Collins to the NFL, the wide receiver core is pretty solid. They have a very experienced player in Ronnie Bell, and then guys such as Roman Wilson, Mike Sanristil, and A.J. Henning. From there, such as Andrell Anthony and Christian Dixon will likely need to step up, and the wild card of the team, in my opinion, will be Cornelius Johnson. Eric All is one of the best tight ends in the country, and I'm really excited to see what he can do. The offensive line gets a little bit tricky as I cannot find a ton of information about it, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. At left tackle, you'll have Ryan Hayes and Karsten Barnhart. At left guard, you'll have Trevor Keegan and you'll have Chuck Filiaga. At center, you'll have Andrew Vestardis and Reese Atterbury. At right guard, you'll have Zach Zinter and Nolan Rumler. And then finally at right tackle, you'll have Andrew Stuber and Willie Allen. Switching over to the defensive side of the ball, they lost Quiddy Pay, who was a first round pick, and linebacker Cam McGrone, so they will have some guys to replace. On the defensive line, the starters should be Christopher Hinton, Donovan Jeter, and Maisie Smith, with guys such as Julian Welshoff, Chris Jenkins, and Jess Spate also getting some action. At the linebacker spot, they will return one of the best returning linebackers in the country in Aiden Hutchinson, and then guys such as Josh Ross, Michael Barrett, Nakai Hill-Green should all play valuable snaps. If you take a look at the cornerback spot, the starters should be Jamon Green and Vincent Gray, with the backups being DJ Turner, Andre Selden, and German Green. Finally, when you look at the safety spot, they'll have one of the best returning safeties in the country in Daxton Hill, and the other starters should be Brad Hawkins, with the backups being RJ Moten, Makari Page, Jordan Morant, and Anthony Solomon. Now I'm going to turn it over to my buddy Alex from the Gridiron Expert to talk about the schedule and the rest of the season. Michigan went 2-4 and four last season, with three of those four losses coming by double digits, yet somehow Jim Harbaugh still received a multi-year contract extension. Despite that, this still feels like a must-win season for Harbaugh in Ann Arbor, and luckily the schedule lines up for him to do just that. When you look at the schedule, you realize that they should get at least two easy victories in the first three weeks with a win against Western Michigan and a win against Northern Illinois. It's that game in the middle against Washington that will really show what this Michigan team is made of. These two teams met in four Rose Bowls from 1978 to 1993. They have not met since 2002, but there's still a little bit of a heated rivalry between these two programs. And when I look at this game, 
With Michigan returning so much on the defensive side of the ball and Washington still trying to find their identity on offense, I think the Wolverines do just enough to shut down the Huskies, especially in the big house. Home field advantage playing a huge role in this one, and they get a win over Jimmy Lake and Washington, a team who could very well win the Pac-12 North. They jump into Big Ten play with not an easy game, but a game we think they will win over Rutgers. If this game had been in Piscataway, I'd say that Michigan's on upset alert. They only beat the Scarlet Knights 48-42 in triple overtime last year. Rutgers is getting better, but they still lack offensive consistency, the offensive big playability, and their defense still needs some work despite returning eight starters. Michigan should win this game at home before traveling on the road to Wisconsin where they'll be handed their first loss of the year. They fell to the Badgers 49-11 last year, and I do not see a 38-point swing coming in 2021. The Badgers are too physical up front in the trenches. They finally have a capable quarterback in Graham Mertz. And again, despite going just 4-3, and three, Wisconsin had one of the best defenses in the nation last year, and that's not going to change now in 2021. Michigan stays on the road and goes to Nebraska. And when you look at their cross-division games, drawing Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Northwestern out of the West, it's pretty favorable. They don't draw Iowa. They do not draw Minnesota. Besides Wisconsin, Nebraska and Northwestern are favorable draws. And I think they do beat Nebraska on the road, a team that has the defense to hang with Michigan but lacks the offense. And then they get their bye week and go back home to face off against Northwestern. While everybody wants to say that the Wildcats, yes, they won the Big Ten West, they should be good again, the Wildcats lose just about everybody from that team that helped them win the Big Ten West last year. New quarterback coming in and Ryan Halinski to replace Peyton Ramsey. Their big-time defensive leaders are gone. Pat Fitzgerald's a phenomenal coach, but even some of the best coaches struggle to go win in the big house, especially facing a Michigan team coming off a week of rest. The Wolverines then go on the road to East Lansing to take on Michigan State. Big time rivalry game, one that Jim Harbaugh needs to win. Everybody knows that Harbaugh needs to beat Michigan State and Ohio State to remain happy and to keep the fan base happy in Ann Arbor. Well, he struggled to do that during his tenure there. And he struggled to beat Michigan State last year. They fell to the Spartans 27-24. I think despite this game being on the road, I think Michigan State still has a way to go in just year two under Mel Tucker. Revenge on the Wolverines' mind, and I think their defense, again, carrying the way for the majority of this season, they're able to take down the Spartans in what will be another one-possession game. It's the final month of November that really is going to be the most difficult for Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines. Indiana, Penn State, Maryland, and Ohio State, none of those teams are ones that you want to face that late in the year. All of those are extremely difficult, and there's a chance that Michigan could actually be an underdog in all four of these games. The first one in November comes against Indiana, a team they lost to 38-21 last year. The fact that the Hoosiers surprised the nation last year going 6-2 was shocking, but the fact that they were able to do all that, and now that they could be even better in 2021, is even more shocking and even more scary. 17 starters back for Tom Allen and the Hoosiers. I think they have enough to come on the road to the big house and win this game. They're strong defensively, Micah McFadden leading the way, and as long as Michael Penix stays healthy at quarterback, Indiana's offense will be firing on all cylinders, a team who could very well be in the Big Ten East title race by November 6. The Wolverines then travel to Penn State, a place they've really struggled to win, struggle to play under Jim Harbaugh. Penn State and Michigan tend to just alternate wins depending on who the home team is. Penn State snapped that streak last year, winning 27-17 at the Big House. Now the game's in Happy Valley in late November. I don't think the Wolverines stand much of a chance. They fall the Nittany Lions. They do beat Maryland, a team that I think fizzles out as the year goes on. Always start strong under Mike Loxley. Begins to fizzle out as the year carries on. They will beat the Terrapins on the road. And then, of course, they will lose to Ohio State in the season finale. We say, of course, because Jim Harbaugh has yet to beat the Buckeyes. The Buckeyes have a chance to be just as good as they were last year. Ohio State has won eight straight over the Wolverines. Michigan has only kept the game or only defeated Ohio State three times since the year 2000. Only a handful of one possession, one possession games in that time. Ohio State's just on a completely different level. We can't pick the Wolverines to beat Ohio State until they finally do. That's going to give Michigan an 8-4 record in 2021. A major improvement from last year but a record that more than likely isn't going to please the Wolverine faithful in Ann Arbor. Alex just predicted that they would go 8-4, and four, and in my opinion, the Wolverines will go 9-3. and three. I think they'll beat Washington and Indiana and lose to Penn State, Ohio State, and Wisconsin. 
They could lose another one of those games like in Nebraska, Northwestern, or Michigan State, but I think they will go 9-3, and, and Harbaugh will somewhat get himself onto some solid ground. Overall though, I think Harbaugh is not the long-term answer. And what is your opinion if you're a Michigan fan? What do you think the record will be this year? How will you guys do? And are you looking for a new coach? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section, subscribe to both Alex and I's channel, hit that like button, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my Ohio State preview. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Thank you.